to be kept by Jesus, kept by the power of kept oh, to be kept by Jesus. kept by Jesus. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Reverend Gibson. I'm one of the sons here at St. Joseph Missionary Baptist Church in Black Bottom. And we greeting, bring you greetings from the St. Joseph family on this, this glorious occasion. I, I, I celebrated hard this morning. I did. And, and, I, and I am going to celebrate after we get done here. Because this is the time we've been waiting for. This is the time we've been waiting for. I have instructions to carry this program out in the order that it is written. That's my job, and that's what I'm going to do. So with that being said, we're going to have uh, our scripture by the Reverend Ernest Brinkley, of the pastor of the Love Missionary Baptist Church. 
Then we're going to have our prayer by the Reverend James Fisher, son of the St. Joseph Missionary Baptist Church. Then we're going to have some wisdom coming from the Bishop Rudolph McKissick Sr. And then I'll be back. Let the church say amen. 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 It is truly a blessed day here today. Amen. To St. Joseph, congratulations on your new pastor, Dr. Gregory. God bless you in your installation on today. My task is to read the New Testament scripture coming from 1 Timothy 3.15, and it reads as such. But if I tarry long, that thou may have know how thou ought to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God and the pillar and ground of the truth. The grass wither, the flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Amen. Amen, amen. Let us pray. Let us pray. Eternal Father, our God, we we come before your throne of grace with thanksgiving in our hearts and with praises, praises on our tongue. Father, we come recognizing your faithfulness, your love, your compassion. Father, we said thank you. And Lord, as we come in this gathering, we come with joy and we come with thanksgiving to recognize, God, your servant in this installation service. Lord, you've been faithful toward us. Even when we've been disobedient towards you, God, you are still faithful. And Lord, we say thank you. Thank you for your love and for your con passion. Thank you, Lord, for looking beyond our faults and to meet every one of our needs. Thank you for the friends and family that travel far and near, Lord, to be a part of this gathering. Oh, Father, we ask blessings upon this gathering. Blessing upon your servant and the family. We give you praise, we give you honor, and we give you glory. In the matchless name of Jesus, we pray. And for your sake, amen. amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Certainly to acknowledge, first off, the pastor elect, Pastor Gregory. Amen. And then to, to know that he'll not make it without a help meet. Certainly to you, Sister Gregory, and the blessedness of a son. And then I acknowledge our speaker, Pastor Gary William, Senior, and to all of my preaching, I better, I start to say brothers, I better say son. <laughs> and I love it. I love that. And to you, St. Joseph, great church, our neighbor, and I'm here to give words of wisdom. I don't know why they put me there. I guess because I'm 94. So 
So I said I won't try to make anybody happy. And I was told back there this is going to be within an hour, so I'm going to help them. But the wisdom goes twofold. Very simple. It goes twofold. It goes for every member of St. Joseph and for you, Pastor Gregory. It's just as simple. I'll be seated. I love it because it is the word of God that works in any union, any joining of God's people. And it's Jesus in the Gospel of John saying to, I feel like his church, when he was talking to his disciples, and he said to them, love one another. And he told his disciples, as I have loved you. That's what I want to say to St. Joseph. That's what I want to say to you, Pastor. Spend less time in organizing and more time in loving. Now, you know, we have commonly said, we have commonly said this, but we sure enough see it now. What the world needs most is not a leo, it's not that. No. It's not storgy. No. It's not that. And it's not by any means arrows. What the world needs most is agape. Pastor, if you agape them and they agape you, all those who didn't vote for you. <laughs> we'll feel something going on here that will have to have them coming back. So I'm about through. That's so important because there's a sense of a little evangelism in that. Love one another. St. Joseph, pastor, that you love one another. Also love one another so that all will know that you are my disciples. And I, I'm through. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Somebody say, that's it. I told you, I told you I'm going to be nice now, but if it wasn't the installation service, I'd be giving an invitation right now. Thank you, Bishop. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. Now we're going to have a, a resolution by uh, Councilman Sam Newby. Well, I'm truly honored and humbled to come behind one of Jacksonville's greatest citizens, Bishop McKenzie. Let's give him a big hand. Yeah. 
St. Joseph Missionary Baptist Church have been a pillar here in Jacksonville for many, many years. It birthed the first African-American mayor. Let's give a hand on that. And, and I can definitely relate to that being the third African-American council president. And actually, I only have four days left to become pre council president. And so this is my last uh, resolution. But as people say, I saved the best for last. <laughs> so on the behalf of the Jacksonville City Council, we congratulate Dr. E.C. Gregory being confirmed as the pastor of St. Joe's Missionary Baptist Church. The City Council honors and recognizes his service and leadership in the Jacksonville community. The city, city of Jacksonville and the Jacksonville City Council extend his best wishes. Thank you and God bless for your service, sir. Occasion by Sister Cora Hackley. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. To our presider, Reverend Maurice Gibson, Pastor Emeritus Bishop Rudolph W. McKissick Sr., Pastor Reverend James B. Sampson, our prestigious guest speaker, Reverend Gary L. Williams Sr., we're moving forward, glorifying God and edifying others. Moderator, Reverend Dr. Ken Anderson, and other distinguished proclaimers of the gospel of Jesus Christ, St. Joseph and visiting friends, last but not least, our pastor, Dr. E.C. Gregory, and his lovely wife, Sister Deirdre Gregory. <laughs> Top of the evening, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh Lord my God, thou art great. Thou art clothed with honor and majesty. Thou who layest the beams of his chambers and the waters, who maketh the clouds his chariot, who walketh upon the wings of the wind, our almighty and loving God, envisioned history and spoke the cosmo into being. He names the stars of heaven and divided their path. Isaiah tells us he measures the ocean and the hollow of his hand and collect the dust of the earth in a basket. He knows the rulers of the world and oversees their careers. Having said that, do you know that before any of us were born, this day was already ordained? So we are here today to witness the blessing of our gift and the person of Reverend Dr. E.C. Gregory as pastor of St. Joseph Missionary Baptist Church in Blackbottom, one who will teach and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, encouraging us to walk with Jesus on this pilgrimage and to do the work of the church. With this new beginning for both Pastor Gregory and this congregation, as co-laborers together with God, receiving God promises, provision, and peace, we will move forward, glorifying God and edifying others. Amen and praise the Lord.
song selection by the Voices of Black Bottom. Then after that, I'll be back.
preaching time. And I can say this, I was listening to this preacher years ago, Sunday mornings, before he even started going to church. I used to always hear him say, let me submit this to you. Whenever I hear somebody say that, they're trying to get me to think. And I appreciated that nugget. In fact, my wife got him on her Facebook page. and She listened to him in the morning. Uh, we had our school out there, Luther Rice. And he hosted us out there. He was a real, he was a real, real host. Thank you, Dr. Lynch, and I never will forget that. He opened the doors and let us learn about our risen Savior, Jesus Christ. So with that being said, let us welcome our preacher, yes, yes. the Reverend Dr. Gary L. Williams, Sr. from the Hopewell Church. Amen. We give God glory for this, this moment and for this day that has been ordained before the very foundation of the world, and we honor the spirit of our Christ in this place. Let's bow in a word of prayer. Father, the hour has come that we share the oracles that come from your heart, from your lips, and from your mind, and it is our prayer that you will let us decrease and you increase empower us, enable us, endow us to say what you've called us to say, and that in which you've placed a refrain on, may we not say it. So it is our prayer that you would bless this pastor, this leader, that you will strengthen his family, that the marriage between pastor and church would be an everlasting honeymoon. Grant them what they need, to do what you've called them to do, both in right and in righteousness. That is our prayer that you will take these lips of clay and this heart of flesh and empower us to do what you've called us to do. So Spirit of the living God, fill your servant. Spirit of the living God, fill this sanctuary. Spirit of the living God, fill every saint. And when we leave this place, may we leave better than from whence we've come. We use the signature and the signia of your name. And we seal this prayer. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And the people of God said, Amen. 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 We give honor and glory to him that was, that is, and who is soon to come. Jesus, who is the Christ, son of the living God. We honor him. We honor uh, the angel of this house, uh, amen, Dr. E.C., that's a good ring to it, Dr. E.C. Gregory, amen, and we also honor First Lady Gregory as well as this family. Would you put your hands together for your pastor? <laughs> and to our presiding officer, Pastor Reverend Gibson, and uh, most certainly the senior statesman, uh, Bishop McKissick Sr. Uh, always a blessing uh, to see him. I was sharing with him just a few moments uh, in the back, and a couple of years ago before COVID, he came and preached for us. I asked him, I said, <laughs> I said uh, Bishop, which service you want to preach? He said, how many you got? <laughs> <laughs> I said, well, we have two. He said, well, I'll preach both of them. I said, all right. And so he, I want you to know, he strutted, he praised, he ran. Everybody that thought they had an ailment before then lost it after he preached. And so uh, we are looking at history uh, when we have this great man of God in our presence. Amen. Amen. And to all of my brothers, all of the, the clergy uh, in the faith and those of you who are here to uh,
Councilman Newby who has gone and the committee and just everyone who is uh, helping to bring this, this occasion together. I'll, I'll say this and get these few comments out of the way. I've been blessed uh, to have great relationships with the present pastor and the previous pastor. Uh, Dr. Rim and I and, uh, and Alvin, you remember we, one of the last things that we worked on was a, a function for Edward Waters College. And uh, what a joy it was in just listening to Dr. Rim's uh, wisdom. Uh, he was like a father. Uh, he was just what I call a sage, just to give you so much wisdom and information. And so I was just honored to have him to be a part of my life and for me to be a part of his life. But I was also blessed to have uh, Pastor Gregory a part of my life as well. Uh, Gibson had mentioned it is that uh, we are graduates of Luther Rice uh, Seminary. Uh, the difference between myself and your pastor is that his doctorate degree is earned. And they just gave me one. <laughs> But, but there was, there was, uh, but, but there's a story behind that. When the seminary was moving to our church, I had lobbied to get the seminary to our church. And they wanted to bring someone in to lead the seminary. Dr. Flanagan, who was the president of the seminary, said, well, Gary, we have someone here. I said, no, Doc, we've got somebody here. I said, he's a graduate of the seminary. He has earned credentials, and he is capable of running this seminary. And so it was E.C., myself, Steve, my executive pastor. We flew up to Atlanta. And when we flew up to Atlanta, Dr. Flanagan, I'll never forget, he asked, he said, did you all drive up here? I said, no, we flew up here. <laughs> and I said, this is the man who is capable of running this seminary. And for the time that we had it at our church, Dr. Gregory was the one that ran the seminary. So... Amen. So I'm honored to have, uh, to know, I've been honored to know Dr. Rim as well as Dr. Gregory. Not to worry your patience long. If you have your Bibles, I've been wrestling with what to say at this hour, and I believe that the Lord has landed my, my attention on this passage. I, I dealt with this at our church and I want to I, I believe it's just applicable now Joshua chapter 6 yeah. I want to call your attention just a few verses of scripture which is actually verses 1 through verse 5 Joshua chapter 6 verse 1 through verse 5 and the reason this wise it says that now Jericho was shut up inside and outside because the people of Israel and none went out and none came in. And the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have given Jericho into your hand with its king and mighty men of valor. You shall march around the city, all the men of war going around the city once. Thus shall you do for six days. Verse 4, seven priests who shall bear seven trumpets of ram's horn before the ark. On the seventh day, you shall march around the city seven times. And the priest shall blow the trumpet, verse 5. And when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, when you hear the sound of the trumpet, then all of the people shall shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city will fall down flat and the people who go up shall go up every one straight before him I want to lift this thought for this occasion instructions for the next man up some years ago we were blessed to have the opportunity to take um, couple of our grandkids to the theme park, one of the theme parks. When I was young, I loved 
not only going to the theme park, but I always love getting on the roller coaster. But one of the things I understood when I was young is that there's one coaster you don't want to get on, and that's a wooden roller coaster. And you never get on the wooden roller coaster because anytime you are on it, you feel all of the wood on the roller coaster. So I, I've learned, I, I went, my grandson wanted to get, and we got on the ride, and we, as soon as we got there, he asked where the, the roller coaster was. We went, exact, we went right there. And when we went there, we got in line, and once we got in line and they set us down, they set us into the roller coaster, all of a sudden, I started having second thoughts. I started asking myself, at this age, what are you doing? on this ride. I, I, I took my glasses off. I took my glasses in. I have lower back issues and I brought me a little brace to straighten up my back because my prayer was whatever twists, turns, and dips that we experience on this ride, I pray that the brace holds together what I pray don't come apart. And so we got on the ride. The ride was only two minutes. It dipped, it turned, it twisted, it dropped, et cetera, et cetera. And at the end of the ride, two minutes later, at the end of the ride, once we stopped and we returned back to where we were, I looked at my grandson and I saw the joy in his eyes. And he looked at me and he saw the joy in my eyes. And the joy that I had in my eyes, it was there for two reasons. First of all, through trials and tribulations, I made it over. That was the first reason. But, but, but the second reason why I was overjoyed is, is because I saw his excitement and what I had done is that I bought, I purchased an express pass. An express pass means that you can get on the rise as often as you can, as long as the park is open. And he asked me, he said, Papa, he said, can we do it again? I said, yes, son, we can do it again. Yeah. And so we went to the front of the line once again and got on, on, on the ride a second time. But there was a, there was a uniqueness about the second time I rode as opposed to the first time I rode. And the uniqueness was this, it was two things, is that first of all, I had grown very quickly accustomed to the ride. But, but there was something else that happened on the first ride, I, I recognized on the second ride that I didn't understand on the first ride, is that see, on the first ride, just before we got to the end, I noticed that a flash took place just before we got to the end, which means they took a picture of us. I didn't know that the first time I was on the ride. But, but knowing that they were gonna take a picture, the second time when I got on the ride, I did not understand where all of the twists were, I did not understand where all of the turns were, I didn't know where all of the dips were, but I knew about the time we would come up to that camera, and when we came up to the camera, the thing I did just before we got up to the camera, I did like this. I put a peace sign up. And when we went to take the picture, while we saw everybody else screaming and everybody else afraid, they saw me and my grandson doing like this. What we see in this text as we look at the life of Joshua is that up until this point, his life has been filled with twists and turns. When you look back in his life, it didn't just start here, but 40 years ago, he experienced the twists and turns of God's power when God used 10 plagues in order to bring his people out of darkness, bring his people out of Israel into the marvelous light. And so now he is at a place where he has crossed Jordan and Jericho is in front of him and God begins to talk with him, but he is at peace with God, with what God is showing him pertaining to what's in front of him. The reason he does not flinch pertaining to what's in front of him because he experienced faith for everything that God allowed him to come through. 
And, and so now, now he is at a place that, that, listen, he is the next man up. Moses is no longer there. Greatest leader in Israelite history. There will be, according to scripture, and God said there was none like him before, and there'll be none like him after. But God is really trying to tell Joshua, it's okay to miss the past as long as you don't miss your future. It, 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 it's all right to look back. It's all right to remember. It's all right to be grateful. It's all right to be thankful, but, but it's okay to miss the past, but, but you cannot miss your future. And, and so when we look at his life, notice where he is. He is now in front of Jericho. I, I want you to look at a few things very quickly because the question of the afternoon is this for the next man up. The question is this, how do I prepare myself for what God is about to do? How, how do I, that's, that's the question of the evening, it's the question of the afternoon. How do I, how do you prepare yourself for what God is about to do? Watch the text very quickly. Verse 1 says this, now Jericho, notice, is shut up. He says, shut up inside and outside because of the people of Israel. Nobody can come in, nobody can go out. It said none went out, none came in. But verse 2, this is what I want you to see because in verse 2 he says this, and the Lord said to the next man up, the Lord said to Joshua, he says, I want to show you something. Yeah. Yeah. He says, now see this, he says, now there are three things that I'm going to put in your hand. Yeah. He says, one, see, I have given Jericho into your hand. He says, number two, I've not only given you Jericho, but I've also given you the king of Jericho. And then everybody that is able and capable of fighting, every valiant, brave warrior in Jericho, I'm giving you the city, I'm giving you the king, but I'm also giving you the fighting men, which means this, that everything that you see, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to place it in your hand. It, it, it's in the text. It's in the text. He says in verse 2, And the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have I've given Jericho into your hand, and the king, its king, and the mighty men of valor. Yeah. And, and so if I'm going to prepare myself, if you're going to prepare yourself for what God has for you, three simple things I want to give you, and I'll be out of your head. The first thing you've got to do if you're going to be prepared for what God is going to give you is, number one, watch out for rip currents. Watch out for rip currents. For those of you who go down to the beach from time to time, you'll notice that the lifeguard has a sign up. They'll say, rip, anytime the flag of the lifeguard is up, that means that the waters are kind of choppy. And it means that you got to be careful because the currents are going in different ways. And understand this, it's been said that over 30,000 people in these United States have to be saved every year off of beaches due to rip currents and people getting caught up in currents. And, and it's, it's a unique phenomenon if you really understand a rip current because what happens is that as opposed to the water breaking on the shore, there's an element and there's a piece, there's a segment in the water, what's interesting, that breaks away from the shore. What, what happens is that it, it really, the rip current is often between two bodies of swirling water. And so as two bodies of swirling water begin to swirl, oftentimes you can identify them by watching the sand go back out to sea or the sand go out to the beach as opposed to breaking on the beach. That's the rip current. And if you get caught up in that rip current, you will lose your life if you don't know what to do. And so one of the things, that watch out for the rip currents, one of the things when it comes to rip currents that you have to be careful of is that whenever rip currents take place, never panic in the rip current. That, that's, that's, what, that's one of the things that the life God will tell you, don't panic. And the reason you can't panic is because hope and hysteria don't mix well together. I, 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 I can't be all over the place 
and still trust God. I, I can't be all over the place and I'm losing my mind. I, I can't be doubting every time I turn around. Hope and hysteria do not mix. And, and so when you find yourself in a riptide, as best as you can, just stay calm. Because your Bible says stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. When, whenever you find yourself in a rip current, just pause for a while and do what the psalmist says. Look to the hills from which cometh your help and you've got to know that all of your help comes from God. Whenever, yeah, you find yourself in a rip current, Psalms 46 and 1 will work well. For God is our refuge and our strength. He is a very present help in the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't panic. Don't panic. Don't panic. Don't panic. Watch out for the rip currents. And when you're in the rip current, never panic. But they tell you something else when you find yourself in, in, in the rip current. You're not just to be to the place where you don't panic. But, but one of the things that they tell you is don't try to swim against the current. Don't try to swim against the current. In other words, don't fight the current. Oh, uh, what are you saying? I'm not saying don't fight. <laughs> because there are times in life, and the scripture tells us that we've got to learn to gird up our loins. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But, but the thing you've got to understand as a pastor is that don't fight against current. And Bishop McKissick just said is that the aim and the tenor of this church ought to be saturated in love. Because when you give love, you get love. Yeah, yeah, when you sow love, you reap love. Don't, 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 don't fight the current, don't fight the current, don't fight the current. And, and see, sometimes over the course of life, both preachers and business folks and, and salesmen, they lose the place where God wants them to be is because they find themselves fighting a current that they can never win. Oh God, what are you saying? See, see, here's the thing you got to understand. Never try to win approval from people who disapproved of you in the first place. Yeah. Yeah. There are some folk, I don't care what you do, he, they're going to say he can't preach, they're going to say it's this, this, they're going to say this, they're going to say that, and you can lose your ministry trying to fight a current in which you can never win. So don't fight against currents that you can't win. Just love on everybody and just speak truth to everybody and just aim to be everybody's shepherd. Don't fight the current. They, they, they tell you don't panic. They tell you don't fight the current. But here's something else they tell you, and I can get to my second point real quick. They tell you, they tell you that the next thing that you need to do is swim parallel to the shore. In other words, if the current is swirling and you find yourself in, in the current, don't fight the current, swim parallel to the shore. Parallel to the shore means this, don't go through it, go around it. And just because you are experiencing detours, the detours don't mean it's denied. Somebody put it this way, you can't hurry God. Oh no, you just got to wait. You got to trust him and give him time no matter how long it takes. I, I wish I had some help here. He, he's a God that you can't hurry. He will be there. Don't you worry. Do I have some help? He may not come when you want him to come. But do I have two or three witnesses to know that he will show up? Do I have two or three witnesses that can say he will make a way? Do I have two or three witnesses to say he will manifest his presence in your situation? He may not do it when you want it done. Don't, don't, yeah, yeah, watch out. Don't, don't, don't panic. Don't fight. Swim around. What, what, how am I to prepare myself for what God, I'm the next man up, how do I prepare myself for what God wants to do is that, is that one I watch out for, I watch out for rip currents. But, but, but here's the second thing you've got to do. This because this is where it gets interesting. He says in verse 3, you shall march around the city with all of the men of war going around the city once. 
thus shall you do uh, six days. Second thing you got to see from this text is, second thing you got to see from this text is this, is that as I watch out for the rip currents, uh, I cannot get full off of appetizers. I cannot get full off of appetizers. Something, uh, anytime you get to a place where you are full off of appetizer, and when the appetizer is better than the main course, that ain't God. Anytime the appetizer is better than the main course. Now, I ain't talking about chilies and Applebee's. I'm not talking about that. I'm, I'm, because I hear some of you, that's why I go there. Well, listen, I'm not talking about that. <laughs> Anytime the appetizer, I, I mean the mozzarella sticks, I mean the quesadillas. I mean the potato scans, but any time the appetizer is greater than the entree, that's not God. Because one of the things that God will do is that God does not set you up for less. God sets you up for more. Mm -mm. No, 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 no. He, he does not set you up for less. He sets you up for more. And see, when you look at the text, notice what God is doing is that God is setting them up. Watch the text. It says in verse 3, he said, you shall march around the city. He says, all the men of war going around the city once, thus you shall do this six days. And then when you go to the next verse, it says you're going to walk around seven times. Check this out. On the seventh day, which is a total of 13 times. Lord, what are you doing? What I'm aiming to do is to get you prepared for what I'm going to do. And the mere fact that you are marching around what I'm going to do is only the appetizer. It ain't the entree. And see, sometimes this is why we can't get to where God wants us to be because there are times in life we have gotten full in the earlier part of the day on something that we should not have had. So therefore, at the end of the day, when we got the full course meal, we already full. That means that there are times in life, depending upon where you're going to eat or depending upon where you are headed, it means this, that you got to deprive yourself and discipline yourself in the earlier part of the day so that when you get to dinner later on that night, now you can enjoy the full course meal because God is not going to put you in a blessed place when you're already full. Don't, don't, don't get full off don't, don't get full off of a a appetizers he, he, he says he says uh, say save room for God and what that means is this pastor as things get well and things go good and the church is moving well do not allow good to become the enemy of great Because folk will get to the place, well, well, let me say this very quickly, and then I'm almost done. When we were building our new campus, there were folk who said, why are they building the new place? What's wrong with where they are? Why, when it comes to black folk, something got to be wrong for us to do more? Oh, I can't get no help in here. I, 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 I see my time is already up. Why when it comes to black folk that we can't have what other folk have? Why when it comes to black folk that we can't excel like other folk excel? L listen, when you're doing more, you don't have to do more because something is wrong with where you are. You do more because God wants to do more in you. Don't allow good to become the enemy of great. 
which means this, that regardless of how well it's going, continue to press the church, continue to pour out vision, continue to lay a dream. Don't get stuck and stagnant, and whatever you have done, we thank God for it. But listen, it's a new season. It's a new era. And check this out, most of us are driving new cars. Most of us trying to get in a new house. You don't go buy no old refrigerator. You buy a brand new one. Well, if I can be new with my refrigerator, you mean to tell me I can't be new with my faith? If I can believe God for my house, you mean to tell me I can't believe God for his house? Don't, don't get full off of appetizers. Then let's close it out and I'm done. He, he says, he said, go back to verse 3. He says, now, march around the city, all of the men of war. He says, going around the city once, thus for six days. He says, then uh, seven priests shall bear seven trumpets of ram's horn before the ark on the seventh day. You shall march around the wall or march around the city seven times and the priest shall blow the horn. Everybody wasn't walking around the city. I, I know we've been messing up scripture by saying they all walked around. No, they didn't. According to the text, the priests walked around. A group of priests carrying the Ark of the Covenant. Another set of priests walked around who had a perforated ram's horn in which you could blow in. And then the folks who were leading the crowd, according to the text, was Israel's men of valor. If I'm going to prepare myself as I'm the next man up, here's the third thing I got to understand. I got to understand this, that victory and obedience are connected. I'm done when I say this. Victory and obedience are connected. He, he says, I need you to walk around the wall. I need you to do it six times. I need priests with horns. I need those who will carry the Ark of the Covenant. And I need the men of battle, the men of valor, to walk around the wall. Don't, don't get it twisted. They weren't just all up on the wall. They weren't close to the wall. No, 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 because if they were close to the wall, all the enemy had to do was just drop a boulder on their head and just knock them out. Watch God, watch God. They were not that close to the wall. They, they, they were far, further enough away from the wall so that if an arrow came or if a boulder came, it wouldn't hit them. But they were close enough to the wall where the enemy could see them but couldn't touch them. Mm. They're walking around the wall and as they're walking around the wall, they're not right up on the wall because if they were up on the wall, the enemy could just could have torn tar or anything over the wall. They are far enough away where the enemy could see them but couldn't touch them. O -o -o obedience, obedience, victory and obedience are connected. And, and that means this. Let me just hit you with a few nuggets under this, and I'm, I promise you I'm out of here. It, it means this. Listen, since victory and obedience are connected, it means this, uh, that, 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 that crazy don't work for everybody. Do I have some help in here? I said crazy does not work for everybody. When you look back in your life and see how God has brought you, but not just how he brought you, how he kept you while he was bringing you, that's some crazy stuff. I, I wish I had some help. See, see, God didn't just start doing crazy stuff, but when you look back 40 years ago in your life, Joshua, when you were there in Egypt and God said he was going to deliver you and he took your leader from the backside of a Midian desert who was keeping sheep and goat and he saw a bush burning and the bush would not burn up and he came and a voice came out of the bush and the voice says, take off your shoes for the ground that you're standing on is holy ground that's some crazy stuff 
God takes a man off the backside of a desert, calls him to be the greatest leader in Hebrew history, and now Joshua, you are the next man up. And check out what God did before he brought them out. He sent ten plagues in the land. The Bible said the last one that he killed the firstborn in Egypt and after they died, Pharaoh's heart was softened and Pharaoh says they can all go. But while they are on their way, God turned around and the same heart that he softened now he hardened and made Pharaoh chase them. Talk about some crazy stuff. And then why would God harden the very heart that he softened? Great question. Because God knows that some things he delivers you from, if you ain't careful, you'll run back to it. So he closes some door to make sure you can't go back. He locks it down to make sure you can never turn back again. And so when you find out that the place where you are is so much better than the place that you left, understand that crazy don't work for everybody and at this stage in your life you got to be crazy enough to know that God can do phenomenal things you got to be crazy enough to say at this season in my life he can still bless me you got to be crazy enough to say that my postseason blessings are so much better than my preseason blessings you got to be crazy enough to know that my latter days are greater than my former days you got to be crazy enough to say that if I sow in tears I reap in joy crazy don't work for everybody yeah, yeah, yeah crazy 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 don't work for everybody victory and uh, victory and obedience are connected crazy don't work for everybody but here's something else you got to see worship and warfare is connected worship b because we get to the fact uh, where, where the walls is coming down and that's good. But don't miss what happened to make the wall come down. Mm. Mm. See what you see in verse 4 and verse 5, you see worship and warfare are connected. Now how do you know that? Because on one hand you have men the valor of Israel who are leading the procession. Anybody going to walk with me? But right behind them, you got priests with perforated horns who are ready to blow. And what the horn means is that the horn serves as a dual purpose. It is an instrument to call the nation to praise, but it is an instrument to call the nation, let's prepare for war. It, it, is, it is an instrument of worship and an instrument of warfare. You've got the men of valor. You've got, you got, you got the men with the priest, with the, with the shofar. But right behind them, you got men who are carrying the Ark of the Covenant, which is the presence of God walking around the wall. And don't miss it, don't miss it, don't miss it. Because the text says, and I got to even correct myself, they did not walk around the wall. The Bible says they marched. Is there any Bible readers in here? And there are three times you march. You march when you're in a parade. You march when you're in the marching band. And you march when you're preparing for war. I believe one of the reasons why we are defeated on Monday is because our worship didn't hit nothing on Sunday. Something is wrong when you've been in the presence of the living God on Sunday and he can't prepare you to deal with a mean boss on Monday, with some evil co-workers on Tuesday, with people who don't care about you on Wednesday. What helps me to get through my week is my worship that takes place on Sunday because when I am in his presence on Sunday, he gives me strength on Monday. Worship. Real worship. Notice how the walls came down. Men of valor, worship, and warfare. A, a instrument that calls people to worship, but that also calls them to go in 
to war. Worship and warfare are connected crazy. Don't work for everybody. Verse 5, and I'm done. They, they, he said, when you get around, when you get around it, well, I need your boys to blow as long as they can and as loud as they can. And he tells them this, and the walls will fall down flat. Here's my final thing, and I'm done. And that is delays are the strategy of God. I don't know how long you've been waiting to sit here. <laughs> there are people say you should have been here. Others say, not him. And now you are here. But delays are strategies of God. You are where you are supposed to be right now. I had you here sooner. Many of the brothers had you here sooner. But to walk ahead of God or beside God is not to follow God. And we don't have it like that where we can walk by him or in front of him. I don't know about you, but all of my life I've learned I got to walk behind him. Strategies are delays because here in the text, God said, I need this 13 times. I need you to do it one time a day for six days and then seven times. In seven plus six, what? what uh, okay. I didn't go to private school, I went to public. <laughs> Look like in our mind, we say, God, why didn't you do it the first day? Because strategies, delays are strategies of God. I, 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 that means that sometimes God has to hold things and keep them on hold until those things are ready for you or until you are ready for it. That, that's, why, that's why some of us are working on our third wife now. Because when we were a child, we thought as a child. We understood as one and spake like one, but when we became a man, I can't get no help here. Some things you got to grow in, some things you are not ready for, and there are things that are not ready for you. But then another reason why God sometimes delays, the, uh, uses strategy as a delay, my final comment, we'll do the charge, is that he understands that to have certain things too soon, it'll kill you. That's why I think it was Jeremiah, one of the prophets said, he restores, of joy, he restored the years that the canker worm has taken away. Which mean in this season of your life, even though God don't roll back your age, he won't roll back your action. You might not be living your best life, but you can live your blessed life at this season. 
So that means this. I don't care how old you are. Now, if you want to buy a house, go buy the house. People tell me, well, why is he getting that? Why, why she is in that little car and she can't have get out? Listen, I... I When you retired, all you got is time. So if it take you 15 minutes to get out the car, and then 15 minutes to start shaking your legs, I wish I had some help. And if you fold it over like a Swiss Army knife, and it take you 15 minutes to tell them I'm living, <laughs> I'm living my blessed life. Enjoy the blessings in this season of your life because this is your appointed time. Pastor, if you would remain standing and just really come just in front of this altar as I I've been instructed to give you this charge. It is the charge to the pastor. It says, Dr. Gregory, you have been called by God through the voice of this congregation to be its pastor. You've been called to help to lead this people in the way of Jesus Christ. Within the common ministry of all of us, you have been set apart for special service to equip the body of Christ for its ministry of reconciliation to the world. As you embark on this chapter of your ministry, there are several things we will charge you with. Number one, I charge you, remember always that Jesus Christ came not to be served, but came to serve. I charge you, seek to live with the joy and confidence that comes from being rooted in the gospel and in knowing the giftedness of life. While your office grants you privilege, it is the privilege to serve in the name of Christ Jesus. So, in the discharge of your office, I charge you to love and serve Christ's people in this place and beyond, even as Christ has loved you. Open your life to them, sharing their joy, their burdens, their labors, their faith. I charge you not to forget the trust of those who have chosen you. Preach the word in season, out of season. Teach faithfully, watching over these people by providing for their spiritual life and instruction. Nourish them with wisdom and strengthen them to glorify God. Care for them with patience, young and old, strong and weak, rich and poor. Urge them to remember the friendliness and the needy. Show the love of Jesus for all people. I charge you to serve this people with energy with intelligence, imagination, and love, relying on God's mercy and rejoicing in God's promise through Jesus Christ. I charge you to seek Christ's presence in prayer, strengthening yourself for your work on both a weekly and a daily basis. Spend ample time in study 
and do not shortchange it. For only then can you be worthy, be a worthy instrument. Trust the many gifts bestowed upon you and allowed. God and this congregation to forgive your failings. Take leisure and recreation. Please enjoy your family and give them time to enjoy you. And may the Lord God bless you and keep you now and forever. the presider and to St. Joseph Missionary Baptist Church of Black Bottom, I come before you to give the charge to the congregation. I would ask that the disciples of St. Joseph Missionary Baptist Church, Black Bottom, if you would stand. Sisters and brothers in Christ, with guidance of the Holy Spirit, you have called Dr. Gregory to be your pastor, to lead you in the way of Jesus Christ. So I charge you, encourage him, respect his decision. Follow as he guides you, serving Jesus Christ, who alone is head of the church. I charge you, pay him fairly and provide for his welfare as he work among you. I charge you, stand by him in troubles and share his joy. Yeah. Listen to the word he preaches. Hear as he teaches. Welcome his pastoral care and honor his calling as he seeks to honor and obey our Lord. I charge you, rededicate yourselves to the gospel and give yourselves to God's renewing power. Yes. Place your whole selves in Christ's service that God may be glorified in this place and beyond. And may the Lord bless and keep you now and Forever, you may be seated. Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord, saints. The protocol already being established. Good evening. This is the prayer of consecration for St. Joseph Missionary Baptist Church. Will Dr. E.C. Gregor and your lovely bride, will you please stand? Amen. Amen. Will the congregation of the St. Joseph Missionary Baptist Church Again, please stand. Those of us who are here with you, we love you, we support you, and we are now going to pray for God's anointing upon this pastor, his lovely bride, his family, and officers and members of the St. Joseph Missionary Baptist Church. 
let us all join in prayer. Gracious and holy God, who called the world into being and who has provided eternal life for us, we come to you in a spirit of joy and thanksgiving at this time of promise and renewal. We are filled with joy for covenants made in your name. We are filled with thanks for the gifts that are offered unto you for service. We pray that you will consecrate by your grace the power of this ministry of this church. We pray that you will consecrate to your purpose the work and witness of Pastor Gregory, along with this, your people of St. Joseph Missionary Baptist Church. May your spirit descend upon them and may the visions given to them give life and give encouragement to the ways of peace and justice and to the increase of the gospel. We ask you, Father, to please bless Pastor Gregory with strength. Open him anew to the biddings of your spirit. We ask all of this in the name of the one who give his all that we might have life through Jesus Christ our Lord. We pray and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. I've been asked at this time that I will give the declaration of installation. I will give the declaration of installation. St. Joseph Missionary Baptist Church, you have heard and you have listened attentively as Dr. Williams gave the charge to the pastor, St. Joseph Missionary Baptist Church, you listen intently as Reverend Dr. Anderson gave the charge to the congregation. St. Joseph Missionary Baptist Church you listen attentively and with open hearts to the prayer of concentration by the Reverend Dr. Clarence Jenkins, Jr. And after listening attentively, St. Joseph Missionary Baptist Church, in your heart of hearts, if you have a spirit of acceptance, would you please stand? St. Joseph Missionary Baptist Church. And all I need the church to say in unison is that we affirm. We affirm. Thank you, St. Joseph Missionary Baptist Church. And the people of God said amen. amen. To the master of the order, we do honor the spirit of Christ today. In him we live and move and have our being. I'm excited about this celebration. I'm glad to be here to witness this installation. I'm also honored to be on the platform with two of my favorite preachers. Bishop McKissick Sr. Amen. and Gary L. Williams. Amen. But I'm also here puzzled saying, what's left for me to say? <laughs> a few years ago, I had the distinct honor of traveling to Atlanta, Georgia with our pastor, Pastor H.T. Rim. 
we had joining seats side by side on Delta. Going to Atlanta, where all four of our national conventions met. And it was during that flight, he said to me, he said, President, the Lord has put in my heart that Reverend Greg would be the next pastor. And I said, Reverend, are you sure? He said, son, I'm absolutely sure he's the learned one. He said he would take them further than I could take them. So for the next three days, yeah. I had dinner with Pastor Rim while he was in his scrimp. Are you sure, Pastor? that I'm absolutely sure. I came back and told Pastor Cooper, I said, Reverend Cooper, Reverend Greg would be the next pastor of St. Joseph. They really? How do you know it? I said, because if you believe that Reverend Rim is a prophet, and he was, then I said, no matter what happened, when the dust settle, yes. Reverend Greg is going to be pastor. Yes, and, and I'm excited today yes. to be here to witness this awesome celebration. Somebody said, well, he's over 70. And I said, and? Yes. Abram was 75 when God saw fit to make him the father of the faithful. Caleb was 85. Lord, give me this mountain. Sarah was 90. Pushing a nation out of her belly. Y'all ain't saying nothing. So I say age ain't nothing but a number. My past is stronger now. At 94, you know, I, I was going to emulate him, Gary, Pastor Williams. I was going to jump off the stage. <laughs> and I thought about it. You know, the jumping part was easy, but the landing part would have been difficult. And, and, and so, as I was with Pastor Rem, you know I was with him, Pastor Gregory, I am also with you. When I heard that St. Joseph had called Reverend Dr. Gregory, I shouted in my spirit. Because let me share this with us. In Reverend Rem's strength. Y'all hear me, and this is more than just a notion. It doesn't matter. Esau was blind, he was tricked, but God was in it. He laid hands on Jacob. When Esau showed up, they do you have anything for me? He said, all I can do is pray for you. Because I've already laid my hands on the one who will inherit the birthright. Reverend Gregory, I shared with him the other day, Dr. McKissick, Bishop McKissick, and Pastor William, Pastor Jenkins, I said to him, whatever you do, don't allow the people to cause you to hit the rock. Always speak to the rock. May be difficult, but speak to the rock. Let me close by saying this. Pastor Williams stole my thunder. <laughs> but Trace, I'm going to go there anyway. A few years ago, 
I went to a place called Cedar Point. It's in Sandusky, Ohio. It had the largest wooden roller coasters in the world. My daughter said to me, Daddy, when we get to the theme park, can we ride on the roller coaster? I said, yeah, we can ride on the roller coaster, but in my mind, I was thinking about the Jacksonville Fair roller coaster. <laughs> but when I got there, those were the tallest, largest wooden roller coasters in America. She said, Dad, I want to ride, and I started saying, Baby, I don't feel too good. But Daddy, you promise. <laughs> so Pastor William, we climb up all of those stairs. We get to the top platform. And then she says, Daddy, I want to ride in the first car. <laughs> Lord, help me, Jesus, right? But me being a man of faith and power, not willing to disappoint my daughter, I manned up. Got in that first car, Pastor William just told us, that thing was chuckling up. Then all of a sudden, it dipped. When it dipped, y'all, I dipped. But my daughter had her hands up shouting. It went up again and went down and flipped. By that time, y'all, tears are coming out of my eyes. But my daughter, Alvin, had a hand up top. Now, unlike Pastor Williams, I didn't get on it but one time. <laughs> but toward the end of the ride, Pastor Gregory, it took a dip and a loop. And by that time, the camera was taking the picture. I was down, my face looked like quasi mono, and when I got off the ride, they gave me this picture. My face is disfigured, but my daughter smiling with her hands up. So I said, Jamie, you gotta answer me this question. Why is it? that every time that roller coaster went down and took a twist, you was able to hold your hands up and shout. Pastor Gregory, what she told me, blew my mind. Basically, she said I was able to hold my hands up shouting because my daddy had his arms around me. I'm gonna leave you with this. When twists and turns come in ministry, hold your hands up and shout because your heavenly father got his arms all around you. As you pass the St. Joseph, I got this from Pastor Gary William. Don't worry about the audience. Strengthen the army. Because when turbulence come and when undercurrents come, you can hold your hands up and shout because your father got his arms all around you. Thank all of y'all. Thank all of y'all. Thank all of y'all. We have a we have state representative Tracy Davis in the house today. Thank you, Sister Davis, for coming. Thank you, Sister Davis, for coming. Now, 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 let us all stand and receive our pastor for the final remark. Come on, pastor. Come on, pastor.
you know, really, I don't know what to say, so I'm not going to say a whole lot because I don't want to mess up this beautiful, 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 beautiful installation. I, I didn't know what to expect or how to expect it, but just sitting back and enjoying it was just, I mean, you've done a great job. The committee, you all have done a wonderful job, <laughs> wonderful job. Everything was in its appropriate position. Everything was exactly, I'm sure, as you had planned it. Uh, I'm not going to call on names again, just like I said, because I don't want to mess up nothing. <laughs> you know, I've told the congregation in years past, I don't like calling names, you know, with my wife. We've been married 30 some years, but uh, uh, I try my best not to call her by name. <laughs> I say, sweetie, honey, <laughs> darling. <laughs> You know, I think I got that from you, as a no. matter of fact. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what, with the, the sermon today from my brother, I, I love this man to death, I'm telling you. I mean, yeah. He, he didn't tell you all the whole story when we went to Atlanta that day. I mean, I'll tell you just a piece of it. It ain't going to be too bad. I really didn't know that Pastor Dr. Williams could cuss. When, 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 when the president of Luther Rice University had made up in his mind what he wanted, uh, this man here told me, he looked at me, he says, Dr. Gregory, get your stuff. Let's head out. I said, okay, all right. But you mean, he says, now. <laughs> so I, I mean, I was following him. I didn't know, uh, but what followed that, I feel I'm not going to say the words. And stuff. But, 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 but he told Dr. Flanagan what he could do with the college. If, if he didn't feel that we had a black man that was learned enough credentialed enough to be able to run that college, then it's time for us to leave right now. And that's what he, you know. And uh, it, 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 it was, I mean, it, it, it was something else. And then Dr. Flanagan, I think he made a comment something like this. He says, if y'all had given me this man's credentials ahead of time, he says, we wouldn't even need this, this uh, meeting right here. He says, the only problem that I have is that this man's got credentials that's greater than mine. He may be after my job. <laughs> you know? But Pastor Williams, I mean, he, 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 well, he put his foot in. He did not compromise. He did not uh, make any kind of deals. He did not, uh, it, it, was, it was the way that he had it planned, and there was going to be no other way about it if they wanted that school. In, in Mandarin, and uh, he had to uh, had to acquiesce, and he took us to lunch, fed us, and I don't even think we went back to the school. He said, "Let's go straight to the airport." <laughs> we got the airport, and we, we we left off. But we've had some great times with uh, at Luther Rice there, and he treated me like I was somebody. He treated me like I was somebody doing the whole time, and that really encouraged me. We had a running joke because it took him a while to find me because he was looking for the for the, the the person to to be the director of the school, you know, so he wouldn't be embarrassed in his presentation of home. And it was a while for him to find me, so it was the old adage or the old joke that we had that I had retired from Bell South and I was in my mud hole enjoying myself. He comes and digs me out the mud hole and then started me on a new path, which was a greater path. You know. So, I mean, through the years, I, I've just loved him from the time that we have went to school together. And then it eventually turned into where God had me to where I work with him on uh, his masters, you know. And so, I mean, it was just a great thing. And then Reverend McKissick, I've just had a love for him from, from the time that... Uh, God was initially calling me to be a preacher, and I didn't understand all of what this was about or whatever, but he was encouraging to me, and 
he was really the first one on the presbyter to proclaim me being ordained by God. And he told Pastor Rim then that I was going to be a great asset, not only to the ministry of God, but to St. Joseph. And, and that has always stood in my heart, always. So, but, and I look around and I see all of these brothers. I mean, you guys could have been doing something else, but look at you. Y'all, y'all came. I mean, it's, you know, I don't know what to say, so I'm just not going to say too much more of anything because I don't want to mess up. But I just want to tell you all that I love you. And then look at my family. They're, they're, they're here. They're supporting me from, from Georgia. Uh, the, the, the mayor of, uh, of uh, Blackshear, as we like to call him. <laughs> you know, so what now? Oh, yeah, where are they? Yeah, from Miami. Look at that. Miami is being represented as well. All right. Okay. All right. And now uh, Daryl got to teamed up with his newfound family, you know, so, um, I mean, I'm just, I don't, I don't know, I'm just so full of stuff, so it's going to take me a while to be able to, to get with each of you to tell you how much joy you've placed in my heart, but more than that, what God has entrusted in me. I don't take it as a light, a light thing. Uh, when I was told that uh, I needed to look more pastoral, so I had to cut my ponytail off. <laughs> my wife was sitting on the bed, tears were coming. Are you cutting your ponytail off? Yes, darling, I'm cutting my ponytail off so I can look more pastoral. So, but, but, but anyway, I'm just rambling now. But what I just want to say to you is that I love you. And St. Joseph, we have a lot on our agenda. You know, God has allowed us a, a period of rest yes. between the greatness of the Black Bottom prophet with what he has uh, built, and now we have a vision to finish out. Amen. We have a vision to finish out. Now it's time for us to work that vision that, that God has given us. And, and we are capable of doing it if we keep our eyes on the Lord Jesus Christ. If we keep our eyes there, we are able to do it. So, I mean, I, I love every one of you. Bless every one of you. I wish I could hug every one of you, and I will eventually. But uh, I'm going to leave it at, at, at that. Uh, I can't think of no other trouble to get into as I look around. So my wife will tell me what I missed. That's important. So I'll leave it to her. Um, I don't know what to do from here. You know, who's, who's running the show? Mayor? Okay, yes. You need to tell me what to do. C come up front, sir. You all know this is the mayor of Jacksonville, don't you? Yeah. And you all do know that he has four more years of eligibility that he hasn't fulfilled yet, right? You all know that, right? I'm not, I'm not being political. I'm just making a statement. That's all I'm doing. Mayor? <laughs> Good evening, Black Bottom. Evening. Let's give our pastor another round of applause. And so, uh, two things. One, uh, it's requested that the pastors and the ministers, they want to get a photo with everybody up here really quickly. Sister Pittman will do that, so we want to hold you for a minute. Uh, as we all know, uh, we're going to do two things. We have the pastor has his, his special guests. He will have uh, dinner in the cafeteria. So we want to make sure that your guests leave first. I think we should do that. So all your guests who are invited for dinner will go there. And then for those who want to take your dinner with them or eat here, we go right over here, right out here in this cafeteria. Where's, where's the chairman, Sister, uh, Sister, Sister Smith? You want to you add to that? You want to come up? Are we good? Okay, so Sister Smith is going to come up and direct, uh, making sure that the pastor's guest, and where is Sister Mozella Jackson? Where is Sister Jackson? She's in the kitchen. So I want to make sure, so if you want to eat here or take your food, you can. Amen? Amen. 
All right, so let's give God another round of applause right now. Let's thank him for his grace. Come on, let's thank him for his mercy. Come on, stand on your feet and let's thank God one more time for a great celebration for our new pastor. Come on, we can do that. Bless his holy name. Thank you so much. And so I will have the, the MC close us out. Dr. Williams, benediction. Well, let's pray. Father, we thank you for this celebration. We thank you for this transition of ministry from Moses to Joshua. God, it is our prayer that greatness will be birthed in this church. I pray, we pray, and we covenant together as brothers and sisters in Christian love, and we ask thy blessings upon St. Joseph. We pray for their future members. We pray right now for future candidates of baptism. We pray right now for new people in the choir, new people on the worship team. We pray for young people to come in and out of this church. We pray for outreach ministry from this ministry that people will know that St. Joseph is not just a church in the community, but a church to and with its community. And so God, it is our prayer that your kingdom will come here and your will will be done. And so as we leave this place, but most certainly not your presence, we ask that you knit our hearts together as one. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and present us faultless before his presence with exceeding great joy. To the only wise God our Savior be dominion, glory, power, and majesty both now henceforth and forevermore. And the church said, Amen. Amen.